Hi, I'm Florence Madden and welcome to season one, episode one of my podcasts. I'm an NLP trainer and coach based in Cumbria in the north of England and I'm also the author of two books. The first of these is the Intention Impact Conundrum, which is based on the Personal Effectiveness at Work course that I run in the Lake District. Uh, and in fact, this book is not simply about NLP concepts, it contains a number of other approaches and ideas and concepts that I believe are pertinent to our personal effectiveness. And the second is called Everyday NLP. This is a book that I co-wrote with my friend and associate, Eleni Sarantanou of Life Spheres. And in fact, this book um, forms the pre-course work for our NLP courses. And both books are available on Amazon. I recognise that during this current situation, um, where a number of you who are either watching this on YouTube or listening to it as a podcast may well have a little more thinking time than usual. So of the eight episodes in this season, what I'm going to do is to release them at a rate of two a week. So I hope you'll join me for those eight episodes. I hope you'll enjoy them and I would love to have your feedback and comments along the way. This series of podcasts was actually promote, was actually prompted rather by um, a comment that somebody made to me, which is that NLP is very specialist. Now, it's very easy when I've become very immersed, as you might imagine, in the world of NLP, to forget that other people don't necessarily know very much about what that is, or indeed to remember that there was a time when I didn't know what it meant either. What I do know is that of the people who are watching this or listening to this, surely all of us at one time or another have experienced self-doubt. Surely at one time or another, we have uh, blamed other people in a situation, but perhaps didn't do anything to improve the situation ourselves. Perhaps there are also times when we are inflexible and refuse to change our approach to something or don't even think to change our approach to something. And maybe also there are times when we are nervous or unsure. Now, it probably strikes you that, well, that's part of the human condition, and it is. And it's that, those elements of human condition that NLP seeks to address. The things that might be holding us back from achieving the success or the happiness, whatever that means to us, that we may want to. So the acronym NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro referring to how the brain works. And of course, there have been huge advances in the last 15, 20 years in neuroscience. And that has um, also helped in the development of NLP. Linguistic refers to language, both how we react to language coming in and also what the language that we use indicates to other people. Um, about how we're thinking or how we're approaching something. And the programming refers to the programs that we all run. This is the word borrowed from the world of IT, but as human beings, we do run programs, except we call them patterns of behavior or we call them habits. Now, sometimes those patterns of behavior, most of those times, those patterns of behavior, those habits acquit us very well, but sometimes, they don't necessarily get us to where we want to be. And oddly, human beings frequently repeat our mistakes again and again. So that tells you what NLP stands for. But let me just take it perhaps um, a little deeper. A friend told me about being out walking with her husband in the woods recently. And given that the trees are still pretty bare, as she was looking through the trees, she saw a deer. So, of course, rather excited by this, what she did was she said to her husband, look, look, there's a deer. And he looked and he couldn't see it. And she said, no, it's over there, look. So he kept looking and he wasn't seeing and she was getting a bit annoyed. And as they walked on and got closer to this deer, she found out it wasn't a deer at all. In fact, it was just the way that some dead leaves and some branches were configured. And how often does that happen to us? 
we hear something or we see something and we think it's one thing. And as we get closer to it or as we hear more, we start to realize that it's not that at all. And the reason that this happens is that we experience the world through our senses. And although there might be, if there was someone sitting beside me right now, they would be roughly hearing and seeing very, very similar things. But once that information goes into our brain, our unconscious mind starts to interpret that information and give it meaning. As a little aside here, what do I mean by unconscious mind? Unconscious mind is simply the part of our brain that we are not aware of in the moment. If I ask you to take your attention to the thumb on your left hand, unless you had a reason to be thinking about that beforehand that you'd hit it on something, the chances are that when you're listening to me, you weren't actually paying attention to your thumb. So now that I've drawn your attention to it, it is in your conscious mind. Now, the unconscious mind actually is believed to um, manage, deliver, if you like, determine more than 90% of our behavior. So there's an awful lot going on that we are not necessarily consciously aware of. And when information comes into our unconscious mind, I said that it starts to interpret those sights and sounds. And it interprets it based on the information that is in there already. That is our experiences, our beliefs, our decisions. And as all of those experiences and decisions and beliefs are unique to us, how we interpret the outside world is also unique to us. And it's sometimes hard to see when, for example, we're sitting in a meeting with somebody else. It can be a little bit annoying when they do not see things the way we see them. But when you think about it, nobody else has lived your life. So how could somebody else see something in exactly the same way as you do? Someone who's got nothing to do with the world of NLP, but uh, certainly made a very important point was Marcus Aurelius, who's uh, the Roman, or one of the Roman emperors. And he said, what we hear is an opinion, not a fact. What we see is a perspective and not the truth. And yet, the opinions that we form, the perspectives that we have, determine our success in life and our success specifically in relationships with other people. And when those opinion and perspectives get in our way, then we need something to be able to address them. Someone else who's, again, nothing to do with the world of NLP, but also whose work I hugely admire, is a man called Timothy Galway, who was the, uh, is, in fact, the author of The Inner Game of Tennis. And in that book, he has a really important formula that our potential minus interference equals performance. And those opinions and perspectives that I referred to are the interference that often get in the way. And that's precisely what NLP is looking to address. How can we shift our opinions, look at things from a different perspective, and perhaps reach different conclusions about ourselves and our abilities, or indeed about other people? The origins of NLP go back to the early 70s and the work initially of a man called Richard Bandler and Frank Puselik, who was then joined by uh, John Grinder. And what they were curious about is looking at people who were incredibly successful in the way that they communicated with other people. And they started to look in detail at how they did that. That's a process called modeling. 
Another way of looking at a model is saying it's a recipe. Look at how somebody does something. Look at the attitude that they take when they do it. And you have a recipe. And if you follow the recipe of a successful person pretty closely, the chances are you will get pretty similar results. And that is the basis of NLP, of looking at ways of developing recipes, if you like, in order to address that interference, in order to address the opinions that we hold and the perspectives that we hold that don't serve us. Someone that I've been privileged to do work with um, over the years is a man called Robert Diltz, who is also, is also a developer of NLP and has been in from and working in the field of NLP from the earliest. And what he said is that when people change, they move from taking a single perspective to taking multiple perspectives. And that really opens up people's thinking and opens up people's world. So in the next uh, episode, I'm going to be looking at something called cause and effect. How we, um, by taking personal responsibility, can start to shift outcomes on what happens in a particular situation. So I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, uh, my books, The Intention Impact Conundrum and Everyday NLP are both available on Amazon. And you can find out more about the services I provide and the courses that I run on my website, which is www.florencemadden.co.uk. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you'll join me for the rest.